I just picked up this bike on Marketplace and I'm really excited about it because this bike has a special spot in Suzuki motorcycle history. Now it's not running or riding at the moment, but by the end of this video, it will be. I like to get these things running so I don't have to just push them around all over the place. All right, let's get that up here. So to the untrained eye and my wife, all these motorcycles look the same. That's because in this era, there was a term coined, the Japanese universal motorcycle. You see in the 1970s and early 1980s, the big four Japanese manufacturers shared so many commonalities that that term universal Japanese motorcycle was born. So what they were trying to do was design the general purpose motorcycle or the perfect motorcycle of the time. And that motorcycle was made for sport riding, touring and commuting. But what makes this bike stand out from all the others and makes it a key piece in Suzuki's history? More on that later. Right now we're gonna get to work. Okay, step one, pull the seat. Pull, actually step one, let's see if, what the tank looks like. That's crunchy. I'll be darned. Look at that. That doesn't look half bad at all. You can't see much, but what you can see, um, I imagine the battery's dead. Yep. What do you think? Is this thing gonna turn over? This is all stuff you should probably do before buying the bike, but you know, here we are. Uh oh. Yeah, nice. Ah, oh, yeah. It was a little tight there at the beginning, but oh yeah. Okay, I like that. Ooh, that's exciting. Okay, so we wanna take the seat off, tank off, get to where we're going. That's tight as can be. Oh boy. So we got stuck carbies. I tell you what though, while we're taking off the seat and while we're taking off the tank, let's pull the spark plugs first and let's get a little pew, 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 down in those holes and help yeah. things loosen up and do stuff. Let's see what these holes look like. Okay, a little debris on top of that piston, but nothing major. I'm gonna use WD-40 for this because I wanna try it. This is like a, when you're cooking and you let your chicken marinate in the fridge overnight. This is like letting the piston and the rings marinate for a while and the, the goodness. So it makes this bike really cool and really awesome. The predecessor to this bike was actually the GT750, the water buffalo. That was a three cylinder, two stroke water cooled bike, right? This bike here, the GS750, was Suzuki's first large displacement four stroke. You see the market was changing a little bit and Suzuki realized they needed a large displacement four stroke to stay relevant and this was their bike to do it. With which is absolutely amazing because this bike and this engine structure actually led to what today is the GSXR. Nice, look how easy that is. Wow. My word, triumph, take notes. <laughs> Those carb slides are done, locked up. Tell you what, I'm gonna pull these caps and we're gonna soak all this stuff while they're still sitting on the bike and I'll drain the oil. And then while that's doing, I'll come back and I'll take the carburetors off. We'll start going through the carburetors. And then while they're soaking, we'll get the bike to turn over and see if we have spark. Plan. Spray some stuff in there. A little WD-40 is good. A lot of WD-40 must be good. Oh, look, see, look, already. Oh, nice! Do you know what I'd be tempted to do? I'd be tempted to see if we can get spark, drain this oil out, put some fresh oil in, see if we get spark, leave the carbs on, hit them with a little rum rum juice. And yeah? See if we can't just get this thing to fire. And then, step two. Dang. It's not even lunch yet. We're gonna get this thing fired up. And just think, you got this thing for what? Pennies on the dollar. Less than 300 bucks. You're about to have a running motorcycle with some WD-40 and some wrench turning. That's right. My heavens, this is awesome. I'm gonna work this kicker here a little bit and get that WD moving through the system. Is it getting easier? It is. Nice. I want to put a battery to this and see if the thing will crank over. Man, dude, this is so exciting. Tell me. See if we get any sort of life. Nothing, huh? Let's see. There's a fuse here. 
We're getting lights. Whoa. Yeah, we're suddenly getting a lot of stuff happen. Was that the problem? Was it the fuse? Yeah. Get out of here. Okay, so we want to get this fuse situated a little better. Get that cleaned up. Dan, are you liking where this is headed as much as I am? You mean with a running bike? Yeah. Yes. Turn the key on again. We still got a light. Still got a light. Now do we have anything? Still nothing. When in doubt, more cables. Mm, yeah, if electricity is the problem. Add more electricity. Yes. That came right at my face. <laughs> Sweet. That's exciting, that's good. Should we see if we have spark? I mean, something was sparking. Yeah, that was just the uh, arcing the solenoid. Oh, you know what? There's a solenoid. Oh, you, just, you just have one. Well, I have, yeah, I have some generic. There's one for a Can-Am Spider. This is just like my little goodie drawer. Except it's not a drawer, it's a cabinet. You get the idea. All right, let's see if we got spark, Dan. This would be absolutely phenomenal. All right, you ready for this? Yes. I don't see, I see a lot of oil coming out yeah, and no, spraying all over me. No spark. Okay, but we can figure that out. The, the dock cover. Dock, do you know what that stands for, Dan? The hawk. Dual overhead cams. This motor was basically designed after Kawasaki's, I think, 900 in line four. And like I said earlier, this is the predecessor to the GSX motor, which became then the GSXR motor. This was dual overhead cam, Suzuki's first attempt at their large displacement four-stroke engine. And this is the early eight-valve head. This engine configuration went on to be a 16-valve head in the GSXR motors, but this is the eight-valve dual overhead cam engine. Honestly, in my opinion, probably saved Suzuki. Found the points, Dan. Points, 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 points. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. I bet you we clean them points and we're going to get spark. Yeah? I bet. You bet? I bet. Should we do it? Let's find out. <laughs> when I saw this bike listed on Marketplace, I immediately wanted it. And the reason is, is because it is a 77, which was the first year for the GS model. Suzuki started actually testing this bike in the US market at some select dealers, maybe late 74 in the 75. And then they released this bike possibly late 1976 as the 77 year model. I believe this is like a, a March of 77 bike. So this is one of the first bikes to roll off in this new model line. This bike changed a lot of stuff for Suzuki. It's really cool to save it. Hit him a little starting fluid. Get them clean. I like using starting fluid because it uh, flashes off and evaporates really quick. So it's good for cleaning points. I'm gonna blow this off though, just so we don't have any residue starter fluid when it sparks. We all know what happens when you have flammable liquid around sparks. That's why I have two fire extinguishers hung up in the shop now, because Dan almost blew up my shop. Well, I almost blew up your shop. <laughs> Nothing, darn it. All right, let's see here. Okay, so we're looking for, this set of wires here is gonna be our start button, should be our start button and our engine start and stop. So let's see what colors we have. Kill switch, K-I-L-L -L switch on is amber, connected to amber, white. And then start button on is yellow green to amber white. Let's test those switches. Start with the kill switch. Amber and amber white. Okay, so that would be orange and orange white, basically. So we should have continuity here if the switch is working. Now you're hitting the starter switch. I'm hitting the kill button there. So then to do the starter button, yellow green to amber white. So yellow green. Amber white. So we got some funky stuff going on in this switch. What does that mean though? Well. Does that mean it's always on? Yeah, that's what it was acting like for sure. Okay, well, now that's working. 
Okay, so let's try WD-40 has been working so well for us. Let's try that. And we're gonna do that by just putting some in this down in here. Saying WD-40 is gonna fix electronics? Yeah, I think if we just get some in there and work this switch back and forth. Did it feel stuck, the switch? No, but there's probably some corrosion in there. Wow, WD-40 pulling through. WD for the win. Let's put a little schmoo on here. You don't even use PB Blaster yet. This thing's about to be fixed entirely with WD-40. Well, I know, right? <laughs> Part of that was design by design. Okay, so there we have a good connection. Let's turn that on now. Make sure we have that turned on. Now I wonder if... Hey! Okay, so we just had to clean the switches and clean that terminal a little bit. Yes. Keep, keep your listen, bikes clean, kids. Listen to this. Let's run this thing here through a pace or two. Nice. Any sort of spark out of here. Yeah. Yeah, no yeah, yeah, way. yeah, yeah, no yeah. Way. Show me. Oh yeah. Oh, I see it. Yep. Okay. All right, now. <laughs> Let's check spark. Oh my gosh, dude, this would be amazing. All right, Dan, hone in there. See if you can. Oh, I'm ready. See if we get some spark. I'm looking. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. No way. I got a crazy idea, Dan. We need spark plugs. <clears throat> These bikes were super popular when they came out. Like the dealers are saying that they couldn't keep them, right? And guys loved them because the 750, that was a pretty big motor back in the day. But they did that to equate moving from two stroke to four stroke. They had to increase the displacement in order to keep the powers the same. Because remember back in the days, like the guys just wanted to go fast, right? So they were buying like the Yamaha RD350s and stuff like that. And then what, what they did like Suzuki and stuff when they started switching over the four strokes, they almost doubled that displacement so that they could keep the same amount of power. And this engine, to give you guys an idea, this motor, the basic architecture of this motor, it was used all the way up through the GS... X models, but guys are still using this motor today in drag racing. It's a really popular drag racing motor. So they'll actually, there's guys, NHRA drag racing guys that are using this engine, the cases, and even a worked crank out of this bike. And they're getting something like over 300 horsepower at like 14,000 RPMs, which is nuts. I mean, to give you an idea, this bike here currently redlines at like 9,000 RPMs. And those drag racing guys are getting this thing up to 14,000 RPMs. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited I can't even hang on to my tools. Okay. What else do we need, Dan? <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> turn the switches on. I'm gonna fire it up. I'm gonna go vroom, vroom. Fire extinguisher. <laughs> Oh, it's, oh, I got it. Yep, on hand. Look at that, amazing. So yeah, now we, it's just, now here, it's, watch this, key on. I'm gonna hit start button and see, just make sure it cranks. Okay. You good? I'm good, you ready? I'm ready. Yes! How many times, like, I can pull bikes out of scrap piles all day long and never stop getting excited when they run. Oh man, that's awesome. So now what, the starter button works. So when you spray it, all it's doing is coming in this end and coming out this end. I'm tempted, I'm really tempted to put a little gas on here and just see what happens. What do you think? Let's, let's hear it. Okay, let's do it. Um, Those are some nice sounds. Certainly interesting, huh? <laughs> like the bike was just... Whoa! Whoa! What's that? Just like stuck floats and everything. All right, well, these carbs are going to have to come apart, but we might still be able to hear it run on gas. Let's try it. Pickled tank. 
Mm, that's a fun smell. Isn't it? Yeah. Mmm. Is that gonna be official Bearded Mechanic merch, like a, an aroma candle? Called Bike I Got Running. <laughs> like cologne, like a man cologne. <laughs> Bike I Got Running, that's funny. <laughs> it's just gas flying everywhere, that's probably not good. Got the points open over here, gas just flying everywhere. Ay, ay, ay. All right, well the good news is that air box goes on easy. Yes. Let's make sure this bomb is turned off. <laughs> So much for not making a fiery mess today. Let's make safe decisions today, Dan. You stay there until you fall off. Let's get some charge back into this yammer jammer. Keys off, all that. Da, 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 da. Let's pop these carbies off and see what happens. There we go. Oh, that's interesting. That one looks completely dry there yet. Let's see what these things hold in store. It's a favorite part, Craig. What will we find? What will we find? Look at that. That one there. Wait, what? This one didn't have a float pole gasket. Could that be a problem? Well, it's certainly going to be leaky without that. How are we missing a float pole gasket? It doesn't look horrible, actually. Okay, let's just pop these all apart really quick. Oh, look at that. The main jet screwed out. I'll be honest. Could this... that have been our main problem? That, that was a would have been a... a Big problem, yes. Actually, it almost looks like, like those jets and these needles and seats were replaced. I don't understand why we're missing a gasket. Somebody done screwed up. Plugged up. We're gonna clean these, and if we can get them to stop leaking, this bike's gonna run on gas. Maybe just good enough for us to take it for a ride. Probably not a far ride, though, because I don't think the brakes work. Now you're gonna watch me spend the next 30 minutes or so trying to get these old carburetor parts to stop leaking. When that is unsuccessful, I'm gonna break down, order a carb kit, and get back to this thing tomorrow. You put the main jet in, you take the pilot jet out, you put the main jet in, and you twist it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you hope it don't leak. That's what carb cleaning's all about. I think we're just gonna put it on and hope that it doesn't leak. Okay, now before we put them back in the bike, what we're gonna do is put them here, stick them here on the bench. I'm gonna get my gas bottle that has gas in it. We're gonna hang this up here. We're gonna put the fuel line on here. Now we're gonna turn this on and see if gas pours out again. Dang it, gas is pouring out again. Quite a bit too. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. That's why you test it. Let's see what we can figure out here. Don't get frustrated, Craig. Don't break the carburetor. Okay. I don't get frustrated. I don't get mad. I get even. Whoa. Yeah, it's still leaking. I'm sorry, Craig. But is it just two of them leaking? Yeah. Two out of four. Ain't is bad. Not, it's not great. It's uh, That's not the song, but. <laughs> Let's look to see if they have a carb kit at WPS. Okay. I'm going to put some. Penetrating oil in here, see if we can't get that choke lever to work. All right, so we need to get these carburetors to stop leaking gas, right? Yes. That is step right. one. Right, so gas. spill gas on so the floor. Spill gas on the floor. Take these carburetors. I'm gonna take these apart for the umpteenth time. Watch you take carburetors apart a lot. Yeah, you're gonna be good at this here shortly. We're gonna put a gasket in here, because I believe this is the one that didn't have a gasket, right? Yep. So these two are leaking through the needle valve. So we can use that gasket on here. We want this needle and seat. So we're gonna replace this old one with this new one, and hopefully it'll no longer leak. Adjust this float height of hair. Doing the lazy man's carb rebuild. I'm only replacing when I need to. No sense you replace stuff that's working. Let's see what we got here. Do we have success? Sweet. Now it's literally just dripping out of everywhere. How did it get worse? That I is thought a, we fixed it. That's a great question. It was not this bad. It's literally running out of everywhere now. Clean out the vents or the, uh, the drain. At least if I do this, it'll drain out of the uh, overflow instead of just out of every hole in the carburetor. There we go. 
How badly clogged were those when Bad. we just started? Okay. Well, this is just Bad. an overflow. So that if it, like the flow pole fills up too high, mm -hmm. it, it runs out. Oh, see all that? Ooh. Ooh. Cleaning these out means that it would have to leak less because there's at least some less pressure from it being able to go through the overflow. Well, yeah, because there's yeah. it's not clogged up. Right. So it would have to leak less, which is why inevitably when you put these back together and it leaks even harder. <laughs> We're just gonna quit. <laughs> so why would somebody adjust the float height though? Uh, they don't know what they're doing maybe, or. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's not a reason. Not really. Okay, fuel's on. No drippity drops. That's nice. That's nice. I wonder if I can work this shaft back and forth and get that choke working. There we go. Getting some movement there. Just need a little persuasion. Okay, fuel still on and we're not leaking. Is it doing what it's supposed to do? So far. <laughs> now, I think what we should do, look at this, this is our air box. Well, let's take this apart and see what we can find. What do you say? Oh, that sounds great. Okay. I'll be darned. What? It's actually not too bad. Look at that. Somebody replaced an air filter. Oh. I would say that's good. We're going to pull it off though because there is a bunch of insect nests in there. So we're going to clean that out a little bit. Slide this out. Look at that. We're going to blow this nonsense out. Clean as a whistle. All right, let's put that back together. That slides into those things. That might be the newest thing on this whole bike. Could be. All right, let's put these carbs back on there now that they seem to not be leaking. All right. Pink. Let's tighten these up. Let me get this throttle cable adjusted. All right. Damn, we're going places. Yeah, we are. I'm not sure where, but we're getting there. We're going to a bike without brakes. That's where we're going. Yeah, we're headed to a crash site. Slip this through here. There we go. There we go. Let's get this fuel line on there. There we go. Fuel line on, fuel flowing. Dan, we're gonna see if we can't get this thing to run on gas, on its own, and do stuff and things. Motorcycles are supposed to do stuff. They're gonna do stuff and things. Yo! What? Right Listen. away! Ah. Ooh, this thing's purring like a kitten! Meow! I savored this moment while it lasted because I still had to figure out how to make this thing rideable. There's stuff flying out of the exhaust, but that's okay. Oh, pickled pink is what I am. Tickled pink. Tickled pink. Tickled pink? I'm tickled pink. Pickled pink. Okay, we don't have any sort of brakes and I don't have a battery that'll fit in the thing. So this rear brake is locked up. I actually had to pull the caliper off the rotor so I could move the bike. And this, this is locked up. So that's a thing. But other than that, it's ready to ride. Other than that, it's ready to ride. Let's think about this here for a second. I think I can get any sort of front brake out of it. Just enough to take it for a spin around the block. I kind of want to keep this bike now. It's because it runs so nice. So nice. Despite being covered in moss. Right. But it's such a cool bike, man. It is such a cool bike. Just great piece of, you know, history let's put the seat on let's see if we can fashion a battery somewhere where it won't fall off and i may even try to put some gas in the fuel tank and put that on here and then let's go for a ride yeah 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 all right let's do that thing and stuff should figure out some sort of battery so you, so you have no battery that'll fit in there the local battery store don't have any Oh, they might. The local battery do, store do, might. Do we want to check? Will that make our life a lot easier? Well, what's our other option? We just set the battery down in there and let it do its thing. Or I wrap this up and I just strap the battery to the seat. And that could be a thing too. Let's do that. That would look more fun. That sounds <laughs> sounds easier. So we'll do 
do that. It's heavy. The seat is heavy. There's nothing better than taking an old bike like this, getting it fired up. It actually runs, I mean, it sounds pretty decent. Now, obviously it needs a lot of work, but think of it this way, man. We just saved another bike from the scrapyard. We just saved another bike from being a parts bike. Somebody can go through here, doll this thing up real nice and actually have something worth having when you're done. Ship shape, Dan, ship shape. Pour gas in there and see what comes out. I put at it with that. <laughs> More than one way to skin a pony, Dan. Well, Craig, why would you want to skin ponies? Okay, so this is a vacuum operated petcock. So let's, um, I'm going to turn this on again and see if I get fuel coming out of here, out of the petcock. Yes, the answer is yes. Very quickly. Yes. <laughs> I, I was expecting more stuff. This thing's starting up really easily. Right? Question is, will it keep going? We're gonna find when out. When you sit on it and when you want it to go. We are gonna find out. So I'm gonna have that bolt to go into there, but we're not gonna worry about that for the time being. Now this is the part that's really important. It needs to go there. Heave ho, Craig. Yeah. I'm gonna stand over here. I'm excited. Are you excited? So excited. All right. It's got some rolling resistance. It'll be like driving with the parking brake always on. Right. Okay, main voyage. We're not gonna go far. We're just gonna see if we can stop and shift. I'll be darned. Oh. Thing runs good. Oh, oh, we got gear indicator. Look, we're in first. Oh my gosh, things work on this bike. How cool is that? Okay, it shifts at least a second, it runs, and it kind of almost stops. I'm not really liking any of that, but there's a brake pad falling out. Oh, there it went. There you go. You didn't want that anyway. No, that's just gonna be hanging out there. Let me get my helmet. Second gear, third gear, any sort of Okay, we got a little break. This thing is making some weird noises. Oh, my speedometer started working. Nice. And this is what it's all about. Digging an old bike out of a garage or out of a barn or shed, somebody's driveway, get it running, and we'd probably do a little more work to get it on the road. But get it running, and then go out and have some fun with your buddies and save one of these old historic bikes. And that's pretty much what we like to do here. Save one old bike at a time. Now to see if we really and there you have it guys we saved one more bike from the scrap pile and here it is the 1977 suzuki gs 750 hope you guys enjoyed watching that video as much as we enjoyed making it for you check out one of these two right here i know you're gonna love them <laughs>